This current lecture has been deleted, but take a listen to what he says at the end about pretty much all of the crypto market. So we already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not ICOs or not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something. Two thirds of all crypto assets are not securities. What is up XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Today's topic and focus is going to be how XRP could be the secret winner in a BlackRock Coinbase deal. And I wanna show you this artificial intelligence from BlackRock called Aladdin, very crazy stuff. As always, guys, this channel is nothing without you. So thank you for watching my content. I hope you learned something new in this video. And if you guys use this terrible app, TikTok, I do post some short videos on TikTok. I have all that in the video description below. So I'm not fully endorsing this, but it is an interesting theory. This guy says, the reason why I think an XRP buyback occurs, the quantum financial system will need all the 100 billion supply for transactions worldwide. You can't use XRP locked away in wallets when they're going to need to use it for on-demand liquidity. Court case gets thrown out, quantum financial system in control, not deep state. Binance goes bust. Why is that significant? Because Binance is by far the largest crypto exchange in the world. And guys, to be fully transparent, David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, has said a buyback is never going to occur. So I'm not going to clickbait you with that. Um, I wanted to play this clip of Elon Musk that he has at the end of the tweet because it's really a testament to what the SEC does to these companies, but it's copyrighted. So I'm just going to read you the text. This is Elon speaking. I was told by the banks that if I did not agree to settle with the SEC, that they would, the banks would cease providing working capital. The banks are threatening Elon Musk that they are not going to provide working capital for Tesla if he did not settle with the SEC. And this would cause Tesla to go bankrupt immediately. So that's like having a weapon to your child's head. So Elon was forced to concede to the SEC unlawfully. Those B words. And he gets really passionate here. And now it makes it look like I lied when I did not in fact lie. I was forced to admit I lied to save Tesla's life. So this is how the SEC operates. They're very much plugged into these powerful institutions. And Gary Gensler has a $100 million net worth. All right. How do you think he made all that money? And with that mo money comes connections. Okay. So it's very clear how Gary Gensler is operating. Speaking of XRP, if you guys need an exchange to get XRP or Flare, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, it's secure. It's where I dollar cost average and buy my XRP every single day. I'll link to Uphold in the video description below. So how could XRP be the sneaky winner in the BlackRock Coinbase deal? BlackRock entered into a partnership with Coinbase in a bid to provide digital asset exposure to its users. However, an expert suggests that this deal is a win-win situation for Ripple's XRP token. And they go on to speculate on a $32 price by 2030. As per Twitter user Wrath of Keenman, BlackRock joining forces with Coinbase will bring a huge amount of money into the crypto market. And they link this article. According to the blog, BlackRock's clients who already own digital assets on Coinbase can now access Aladdin, which is an asset management suite. Take a listen to this video on Aladdin. If you haven't heard of Aladdin, it's kind of eerie stuff. BlackRock, they call it the fourth branch of the US government for a reason. They have $10 trillion in assets under management. And I want you to learn a little bit about this BlackRock AI tool that basically just understands the markets at all time. And really quick guys, as always, I give away $10 in XRP on the channel every day. Winner in the video description from yesterday. If you wanna enter the giveaway, just like the video, subscribe, with notifications on and comment anything in the YouTube comments below. All right, take a listen. There is a run the computer more powerful than traditional politics. The bank in the world is around $5 trillion. Aladdin has grown into a system responsible for more than four times the value of all the money in the world. This one robot directs the actions of the US Federal Reserve, almost every major bank and investment fund on Wall Street, and over 17,000 traders. It controls half of all ETFs, 17% of the bond market, 10% of the global stock market, and carries out a quarter of a million trades every day and billions of forecasts every week. Year after year, it hoovers up trillions of data points on every market, every company, every asset, and now even each of us. What we buy, sell, and say, so that it knows what to buy and what to sell far better than any human being. Every major bank, company, and investment fund has come to rely on Aladdin and its all-powerful AI and algorithms to beat the market. And if they didn't, they've collapsed and failed in Aladdin's wake. And you know what the craziest part of this story is? This robot is just getting started. So where did Aladdin come from and how did it get so powerful? 
Aladdin is the brainchild of Larry Fink, the founder of BlackRock, and its total dominance has made his company the biggest shadow bank in the world and the most powerful company on earth. The story you're about to hear is equally unbelievable and terrifying. In fact, you would think it was science fiction if it wasn't very real and happening today. This story starts in the 1980s when Larry Fink was making millions pioneering mortgage-backed securities at Wall Street Bank First Boston. That's right, the same mortgage-backed securities that caused a 2008 global financial crisis 20 years later. But back in the 80s, he was in an epic Wall Street rivalry with Louis Ranieri at Salomon Brothers, made famous as the big swinging dick in Michael Lewis's book, Lies Poker. Back then, Larry was making millions for the bank and was on track to be First Boston's CEO. And then in 1986, an error in the back office computer models led to Larry making the wrong trades and he lost the company a hundred million dollars. The result was Larry leaving the bank as a failure with a stupid computer to blame. With that experience, Larry had just one ambition, to build a super smart robot that could pick out risk and opportunity in the market and do it better than any computer or human could do. In 1988, he launched a new startup, BlackRock, with a tiny coding team to give birth to this robot. Its name, Aladdin, which stands for Asset, Liability, and Debt Derivative Investment Network. In its first 10 years, Aladdin was fed information about every asset, price movement, and risk variable in the global bond market, Larry's specialty. And in 1999, when Aladdin turned 11, Aladdin was getting so intelligent at picking losers and winners that Larry began selling access to his data to other Wall Street firms. That same year, he took BlackRock public on the New York Stock Exchange. Straight after the IPO, the dot-com bust burst, pushing a wall of money from the stock market to bonds, which Aladdin had become the undisputed world champion in. Within years, BlackRock had become a trillion dollar company. And as money started shifting back to shares, what did Larry do? He bought the asset management arm of Merrill Lynch, which was focused at shares. So the gift for Aladdin's 18th birthday, all the data points for the entire stock market. And suddenly Aladdin had a new playground, analyzing every stock trade and risk factor for every company on the stock market. As a result, today BlackRock, together with his two closest rivals, Vanguard and State Street, both of which also rely on Aladdin the mountain of knowledge have become the biggest shareholders of over 40% of all public listed companies in America. 2008, the global financial crisis hits, and before Aladdin turns 21 years old, is caught on by every Wall Street bank and Timothy Geithner, the head of the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury. As soon as Lehman Brothers collapsed and the Wall Street meltdown began, the U.S. government came calling to save the next collapsing bank, Bear Stearns. It was Aladdin who decided which assets to keep. So if you guys have ever seen the movie Eagle Eye, this is kind of a similar technology, even though that movie is obviously a movie, it's entertainment. A software that controls the most money in the entire world, and it has tons of data points. This thing's been going for decades. I don't know if you guys had heard about that before, but definitely check out Roger James Hamilton on YouTube if you want to watch that full video. That was just half of it. Very interesting stuff. So back to how XRP could be the sneaky winner in this deal with Coinbase. Keeman highlighted that BlackRock hired Ripple executive back in 2019 to lead the division of its digital assets. And guess where this lady worked previously? Guys, make sure you smash that like button if you haven't already. Got to dig deep. Takes a lot of time to find this content. And I hope you do enjoy something from it. It's free and it helps support the channel a lot. I'm very grateful. In 2018, Susan Athey, Stanford professor... And Michnik published a paper on the value of Bitcoin and XRP tokens. However, Susan Athey, that same Stanford professor, is now a Ripple board member. He also added that 2018 valuations papers highlighted that if XRP proves to be successful, then it would be valued between six and thirty-two dollars. Now, how do we get that price? Well, Ripple CTO David Schwartz has explained many times that the price of the XRP token is correlated to the dollar sum transacted through XRP with on-demand liquidity. So if the token is successful, lots of banks are using it, billions, trillions of dollars are moving through on-demand liquidity, that forces the price of XRP to go up. So you just need to worry about, do you really think that Ripple as a company is going to be successful this, with this innovative technology that saves banks time and money? When you look at startups, what do you look at? The founder in the rationality of their idea. How rational is the idea of saving banks time and money? Business is all about money, right? Business doesn't care about your feelings, cares about your dollars. Banks are in the business of money so if you can save a bank time 
and save them money that they can now use that other money to then invest and make interest on, which is what banks do. They, they take the money, they get more loans on it, and then they just invest it in safe bonds typically. Why would they not do that? So when we talk about value proposition, there's nothing really close to XRP. He added that there are a couple of important things that came out of the paper. It mentioned the steady state of demand, right? If XRP gains its demand and it's used a lot, I don't see any reason why that would just fall off. The most interesting part of this paper is that it forecasts the success range for around 12 years. So the year has been their consideration. As per the value of the paper, XRP is expected to reach 6 to $30 by 2030. Could be a lot sooner than that. This is just one speculative assessment. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you made it to the end, comment BlackRock in the comment section below. When you watch the full video, it really supports the channel. And let me know what you think about this bucket hat. Do I look kind of swaggy or do I look goofy? This shirt, I need to change it. All right, God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Until next time.